seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. I decided to put some drone footage back in there, get that going again. Hope you guys like it. Hope you like the view of the new place. Alrighty, here we, here we go. What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today we're gonna do a shorter haircut in the pixie family. It's not really a pixie cut, definitely more of just a short haircut, long bang. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, I got the Mizutani Type Z Dual Texture Scissor. This is a texture scissor that I love using. It's got texturizing blades on both sides. So it's a really cool scissor and I wanna use that for all my texturizing at the very end of this cut. So I think you guys are always asking for shorter cuts. You're always asking to use the texturizing scissors. So I'm gonna show you guys some cool techniques to go along with that. So I hope you guys like the video. Let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't forget and you see all of our upcoming videos uh, coming soon. So hope you enjoy, let's get started. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with the most important part of cutting hair, which is sectioning off the head. And what I'm gonna do is separate the top and the bottom. Whether this was a short cut, a long cut, it doesn't matter. You wanna make sure that you're always sectioning off your work, keeping it organized so that you stay nice and consistent throughout the cut with the goal that you had in mind. My goal here is to have a disconnected top, so I section off the top. I go right along the parietal ridge, all the way back to mid crown. That gives me a nice rectangle on the top of the head. Then I separate the front and the back at the division line. The division line, I really just feel the head shape. I feel where it starts to curve back. That's where I make my parting. In this case, it was right behind the ear. And then I go directly down, uh, vertical parting down center back, and then section off horizontal sections from there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a two inch portion in my fingers horizontally. Now, cutting a pixie cut horizontal might seem kind of weird, but what I wanted to do was really create a strong shape in the back and stay consistent and also push myself to work horizontally because I think if you push yourself to cut vertically and horizontally just as well, um, you're gonna be a, a more rounded hairdresser because you're looking at the hair um, at all different angles. Horizontal is thinking about it one way, vertical is thinking about it the opposite way. So as I go through here, I over direct the top, that first section, uh, pinch it together. What that does is gives me kind of a fringy feel in the very back of the head shape. And then I start working up nice small horizontal sections. So as I go around the round of the head, I need to make sure that I'm following the head shape and I'm not letting my hand drop because what that's gonna do is create too much weight and then I end up with those lines throughout the haircut. So I wanna create a seamless feel. The only way you could create a seamless feel in a cut like this, cutting it horizontal, is to stay consistent with your elevation. So really focus on how high you're elevating the hair. Make sure it's 90 degrees out from the head. And then as I start to work um, up that crown portion of the head shape, then I'll drop my elevation below 90 just to start to build up a little bit of weight as I work through. The other key thing that I want you guys to look at here is the fact that we're working around the head shape. So I'm not over directing everything back. Um, when you see the overhead view, you'll see that. I'm following the head shape around because I want to keep consistent length around the head shape as I'm working. If I brought everything straight back to me the entire way, see how I'm curving around the curve there? If I brought everything straight back to me, what I would do is I'd push a ton of length to the front and that would be more of a triangular feel or uh, just pushing that extra weight towards the face. And I don't wanna do that in this cut. I wanna keep a consistent length around and continue that length into the side of the haircut. So now notice my elevation drop throughout the back so that I didn't go straight up from the crown. Um, I wanted to bring down that elevation. That's going to keep the head shape uh, and get, keep the proportions of the head shape nice. So I just work my way through that way. Now you can get a good look at how I pinch that hair together and that fringy look that it gives it because I'm over directing the bottom nape area uh, up to my section. It pushes a little bit of that length down, which will give me some hair to play with once, once it's, um, it's dry and we start doing some of that detail work. 
So same thing on this side, working my way around the head shape, horizontal partings, clipping everything away, just keeping everything nice and clean. I think this is the key thing for you guys to really focus on is each section should be nice and clean, consistently the same size. And then as you work through it, you can see I'm working around the curve of the head there, keeping a consistent length and just working. Uh, that's going to create more rounded layers throughout it. So if you look at shape and you look at um, elevation. I was taught that shape has everything to do with your hands horizontally. So because I'm rounding the head, that's giving me a round feel to the haircut. But then the elevation has everything to do with um, how much weight you're keeping or removing. So I'm keeping everything at a 90 degree point until I get up to the crown because I want seamless uh, layering in the haircut, but I'm following the round of the head horizontally because I want a rounded haircut. So if I want a round layered haircut, that's how I'm going to work through it. So same thing here. Watch my elevation now because it will start to drop. The reason for that is at the bottom of the crown is where I want my weight line to sit. If you have somebody with even thicker hair than this, if they have more of a uh, really heavy density, then you might elevate the hair a little bit longer, then drop it right at the last minute. So it's really, haircutting to me is kind of a dance in a way that you're working your way to a point and you're really passing that weight on as you work up the head. So now I'm going to blow dry the back. This is something, a uh, technique that I like to do a lot with short hair is really finish the section that I was just working on because if I polish it out, I can really see it, make sure the length is exactly where I want it. I can work out any of those calyx. Then I'll go through, this is my blacksmith fit six and a half inch scissor. Uh, it's a longer scissor than I was just using. I was just using a five and a half inch uh, type K. So this is the six and a half inch blacksmith fit. It's got a longer blade, so it's a nice blade to go through and create a uh, little scissor over comb, cross check work. So I was just cross checking, going through there, dusting the ends. It's not even really a cross check because I went through horizontally, but just dusting the ends, making sure everything is flowing uh, nice through there. So now we're gonna work diagonal forward. And diagonal forward, I can actually see my guide coming through. Um, sorry guys, I only got the overhead view on this, but I think it's actually a good view, uh, point of view for what we're doing. So just diagonal forward partings, working my way across the head shape. Again, think about it this way. So if I'm working, if I was working horizontally across this, you'd have a nice even line that follows all the way around to the face. So even though I'm working vertically, I'm still taking small sections, directing them straight out from the head to create uh, seamless layers as well, and also a round shape because we're following the round of the head. It's just we're working vertically, so we're working more with elevation. Same thing on the opposite side. Biggest difference here is that my fingers are pointing down. We have a golden rule that your thumb should always be pointing in the direction you're moving. So because I'm moving to the right, um, my thumb is pointed to the right. So that just allows me to have consistent combing. If you think about how I was combing the hair on the opposite side, I was combing it away from the face towards the guideline. So in this same thing, I'm combing it uh, away from the face towards the guideline. Hopefully I got that right, I'm not really sure, but I'm combing everything very consistent throughout the head. I'm working back with my type K. This is a five and a half inch scissor. Anytime I'm working precision, I like to work with a shorter scissor because the blade is stronger. Um, now I'm also going through and elevating just that top edge on the round of the head because I tend to lose a little tension when I go through and cut. Um, you can see that the very top of that section is in between my fingers. That's where I lose tension a little bit. So I like to go in and just soften it with a little point cutting right around that round of the head. So now we're going to connect the top. This is really what makes this haircut. So everything for the most part that we've cut so far is very consistent, cut with the round of the head, cut with 90 degree elevation for the most part. Now we're going to go through, create more of a rooftop kind of triangular feel on the very top of the head. So I'm going to over direct everything connecting uh, that point to the side of the hair. So we take a guideline from the side and then I just draw a line straight up to create that point. So now I'm going to work my way across the top of the head until I get to um, about 
three inches away from the front and then I'm going to start to over direct everything straight back. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm, it's again, kind of like a dance. So I work three sections up. I kind of walk my way up to the front, keeping uh, consistent layering throughout that. Then I decide at that point, as I'm going to go around that round of the head, I want to push extra weight to the front. So I start over directing everything back. So you can see that happening there. Same thing here. Now I've got something to connect it to. So I grab a piece from the side and I grab a piece from the top and just connect those. The reason I'm doing a point cutting technique is point cutting gives you more of a jagged edge. So not as much weight line buildup. So that's, I'm really just trying to create texture and soft, uh, softer feel on the top of the head. That's going to come through in the end result when we start uh, really polishing it out. I'm going to use my texturizing scissors as well. So there's a lot of things that are going to go into creating texture on this. We didn't need those nice hard solid lines on there. So this is that front part that I'm just going to over direct to the center of the head. We could call it the high point apex part of the head. Um, I don't want to over direct it all the way back over mid crown. If I did that, it would be way too long in the front. You're already going to see that there's a lot of length up there, but we've got nice short layers working through on the top. So we're going to use our Bricado mousse. Um, this is a really light mousse. I like it. It's got a medium hold and it's very conditioning. So I like using that in the hair. It doesn't make the hair crunchy or hard. Uh, so we're going to work that through the head. And then I'm going to do a blow dry flat wrap. So you're really going to notice me using that nozzle to blow the air over top of the cuticle of the hair adding a lot of shine. I think a lot of people, um, and this is just an assumption, but I think a lot of people with short hair would just do a quick blow dry just to get it done. And then they would add product in there. What you're doing is you're taking out all the shine if you do it that way, if you do like a power dry. So what I'm doing is I'm polishing the hair from the scalp to mid shaft, really working that air over top of the cuticle, laying the cuticle down and adding that shine. Then what I'm gonna do is use my Bricado Vibrastrate Iron. That's gonna go over the ends, but before I do that, I wanna use um, Hot Shapes. This is a Cloud9 product from Bricado. And let's talk about uh, heat protectant for a second. What I do is I spray that in. It's a wet-based heat protectant. The reason I like that is if you think about it, when you spray something dry on dry hair, if it's a dry protectant spray, there's nothing wrong with it, it's great but it doesn't really penetrate into the hair. So wet products are gonna actually go in there. So what I do is I spray the wet heat protectant on there, I hit it with the blow dryer a little bit, then I polish through and iron the ends, then you don't get damage on your hair. Now we're using our Type Z dual texture scissor. The breakdown of this tool that I love so much is that because both blades are texturizers, um, there's no pull in the hair whatsoever. So I go through, create that texture. You'll see that I'm over directing everything to my side and then it's actually gonna be worn on the opposite side. So what you wanna do is over direct everything over, cut through mid shaft to ends to just lighten up uh, the front of the fringe. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, point cutting, dragging that texture scissor through the hair, but not getting any pull because of the type Z dual texture uh, um, aspects of it. So now you can see all that texture. I go through, I do one more quick little flat wrap. What this does is gets all the loose hairs out of the head. And now I'm gonna go in with Joyco Matte Grip. This product has a lot more hold than I thought it would. So um, it was cool, it smells great. It's probably the best smelling product I have here. Uh, I put it through the hair. And then once I got it into the hair, I noticed I left it in my hands a little too long. So what I did was I brushed through uh, the product into the hair. I put a little bit more product on my hands just to uh, have it go in the hair a little more of a wet application. So the longer it stays in your hands, the drier it gets and the stickier it gets, which is great for people that want that hold. You just need to make sure that you go right into the hair with it and then you can start molding. Don't wait. Um, so you can see I'm, I'm working with that fringy area in the nape, adding a little bit of product to that. I love the way the fringe kind of comes over but has a lot of texture to it. So I think you guys will be able to utilize that technique for sure. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, I'd love to answer those. But we're just going to finish it off. I got Bricado's uh, Firm Hold Hairspray just to give me that finishing touch. And then we'll give it a spin for you. You can see um, all the texture in it, but also that expansion where we dropped our elevation in the back. Uh, pretty cool. So hope you guys like it. Let me know again in the comments below. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Also, hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and if you're not a hairdresser but you were inspired by this cut and you wanna try something new, go to hairsalonlocator.com, check out all of the salons on there. That's our website where we put the salons that follow FSE education. With that being said, if you're a hairdresser and you're watching this video and you're not part of our FSE partner program yet, then you should go to fsepartner.com get signed up take the monthly classes that are live and they're free also you can create playlists and libraries it's basically a netflix for hairdressers so go sign up it's free of charge so hope to see you guys there hope you enjoyed the video plenty more to come thank you guys for watching we'll see you soon